the Bohr model of the atom and the realization that electrons can behave like waves created a new model of electron properties in the atom called the quantum mechanical model. The following are some important characteristics of this model. The first is that electrons can be found only in specific locations or levels around the nucleus. These are what Bohr call orbits. These orbits are also called energy levels or shells. So the one closest to the nucleus is called the first orbit or the first energy level or the first shell. The symbol for a shell is n, so the first orbit or the first shell is n equals 1. Only specific parts of an orbit can contain electrons. These parts of the orbit are called orbitals or subshells. Orbitals are not orbits. Orbitals represent the general location where an electron can be found in an orbit. Each orbital can have one or two electrons, but no more than two. The way I think about orbitals is like an apartment, where the landlord limits the number of renters living in each apartment to either one or a maximum of two people. Each level or orbit can potentially have four different orbital types. These are called S, P, D, and F orbitals. Continuing with the apartment analogy, the levels are similar to floors in an apartment building, and on each floor you have different types of apartment, a studio, a one-bedroom, a two-bedroom, or a three-bedroom, corresponding to the different orbital types. The shape of these orbitals are shown here. This is an S orbital, these are P orbitals, and this is an example of a D orbital. We will now go and visit each of the levels or each of the floor of these weird apartment building and try to understand it a little bit more. The first level or the n equals one level is the closest one to the nucleus. So it has a very limited volume and can only have one s orbital in it. Since each orbital can at the most have two electrons, level one can only have two electrons and no more. If we have electrons in this specific orbital, we will call it the 1s electrons. 1 because it's in level 1, s because it is in an s orbital. Level 2, which has the symbol n equals 2, has more space in it and is bigger, so it can have more orbitals. It contains 1s orbital and 3p orbitals for a total of 4 orbitals. Since each orbital can have 2 electrons, we can have a maximum of 8 electrons in level 2. These are called the 2s and 2p electrons. Level 3, or n equals 3, is even bigger and can have more orbitals. 1s orbital, 3p orbitals, and then 5d orbitals. The total number of orbitals is going to be 9, and a maximum number of 18 electrons can be found in level 3. In level 4, we can have all four different types of orbitals, s, p, d, and f. There's 1s, there's 3 of the p's, there's 5 of the d's, and then there's 7 of the f's. This gives us a total of 16 orbitals, or 32 maximum electrons, since each orbital can have two electrons total. In chemistry, we care about where these electrons are located. As we said earlier, the electrons that are furthest away from the nucleus are also the least stable ones. These electrons will be the one that end up getting used in chemical reactions. We call these electrons valence electrons, and the shell that they're in is called a valence shell. Because the electrons make up an atom, to predict what an atom will do, we must write its electron configuration, which is just a way of describing how the electrons are organized in the atom. In a sense, the atom is like a machine that is built up by pieces of electrons. To understand the machine, you're going to need to understand how the pieces are put together. Now, just like in any machine, electrons in an atom must be connected together in a certain way following specific rules. You're going to have to start by putting your electrons from the lowest energy orbital, in this case from the 1s orbital. This idea is called the Aufbau principle. Aufbau is a German word that means this is the rule to build up the atom. A diagram on how you can fill electrons into your atom is shown here. This is 
what we call the Aufbau diagram. You can read it as follows. First, you start with your electrons from the 1s orbital, and then follow that up with the 2s orbital, and then follow that up with the 2p orbital, the 3s, the 3p, the 4s, the 3d, 4p, and so on. The way you generate these diagram is by writing all your s orbitals first, then your p, then your d, and then your f, and then create the pattern that is shown here. The second rule about filling in electrons is that some orbitals on the same level have the same energy. For example, recall earlier I mentioned that you can have three p orbitals at the same level, for example, level two. All of these two p orbitals have the same energy. They are what we call degenerate orbitals. In degenerate orbitals, or orbitals with the same energy, we must place the electrons one at a time before we pair them. The reason is we want to avoid the repulsion that occurs between two electrons that both have negative charges. The last rule to remember is that we can only have a maximum of two electrons per orbital. So if we have three of those p orbitals that I just mentioned, then we can only have a maximum of six electrons electrons in them. Similarly, if we have five d orbitals, then we can have a maximum of 10 electrons in them. And if we have seven f orbitals, we can have a maximum of 14 electrons in them. Okay, now that we learned the rules on how to write an electron configuration, we're going to start applying these rules in several examples. We're going to start with something that's fairly straightforward, which is lithium. It has only three electrons in them, if you go to the periodic table to check. And so the question is, how do we place these three electrons? Well, we're going to start by putting the electrons in the 1s orbital, as the Aufbau diagram tells us. In the 1s orbital, you can have a maximum of two electrons. So therefore, we would write 1s with a two on the top telling us that there's two electrons that we can place there. Once we do that, we can't put any more electrons there because that's the maximum number. So we need to take that third electron and place it in the next orbital. According to this diagram, the next orbital is the 2s orbital. So we would put that last electron in the 2s orbital. So the symbol will be 2s1. This tells us that the electron configuration for lithium will be 1s2 and 2s1. This is one way you can write the electron configuration of lithium. Another way is you can draw what's called the orbital diagram, which looks like this. In this type of representation, each orbital is given as a square and there's a label underneath it to indicate what orbital it is. So in this case, this is my 1s orbital. Inside the orbital, I would place my electrons represented by these half arrow symbols. The half arrows are pointing up and down because electrons have what we call spins. So they're either pointing up or pointing down. And so that's why the arrows are drawn that way. So in the 1s orbital, we have two electrons. So we would draw it with one up and one down. In the 2s orbital, we only have one electron, so we're only going to draw the one up arrow there for that electron. So that's the orbital diagram of the lithium atom. If we go to the next one, which is beryllium, it has four electrons total. So again, with four, we would start by putting the first two in the 1s, as the Aufbau diagram tells us to. And then that maxes out the amount of electrons we can place in 1s. We go to the next one, which is 2s, and we put the other two. So the electron configuration for beryllium is 1s2 and 2s2. The orbital diagram would then have the two squares for 1s and 2s. Each one of the squares or the orbitals would have two electrons, one pointing up and one pointing down. Let's go to boron, which is the next element in the second period. Now we have five electrons. So for five electrons, remember we're going to go with 1s and that has a maximum of two. 2s, that has a maximum of two. So now we've used up four electrons. And then the next one, if you follow this along will be 2p. In 2p, we have to place that last electron, the fifth one. So the configuration for boron would be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p1. In the orbital diagram format, it would be drawn this way, 1s2, and then 2s2, 
And then the 2p1 has three different squares in it. Now, why is that? If you remember, I had mentioned that the p orbitals always come in three. So there's three p orbitals for a given level. So when you go to a p orbital, what you have to do is draw all three of them like that. Remember that they all have the same energy if they're at the same level. So we put the first arrow there to represent the first electron that occupies that 2p orbital. If we go on to a next example with carbon, now we have six electrons. Going back to our Aufbau diagram, to place six electrons in an atom, you're going to have to start with 1s2, followed by 2s2, followed by 2p2. Now, Here's where that second rule about degenerate orbitals become important. The way we draw this would be one square for 1s, one square for 2s, three squares for the 2p orbitals, because remember that p orbitals always comes in threes. And in this case, we have to place two electrons in the 2p orbitals. Remember that second rule about orbitals that have the same energy, you have to fill them one electron at a time. So if we come back down here for carbon, we would put the first electron here, and we wouldn't pair it up first, we would put the second electron right here. So in other words, the two electrons are not paired in the same orbital, but they are separated. Again, this is done to minimize electron-electron repulsion that would destabilize the atom. If we go to nitrogen, now there's seven electrons. The first four are the same. It's always going to be 1s2, 2s2. The last three are going to be in the 2p orbitals. Now, similarly to the carbon example, the three electrons are going to be spaced out. So one in each of the 2p orbitals. If we go to oxygen, now we have eight electrons total. The first four is going to be in the 1s and 2s orbitals. The last four is going to be in the 2p orbitals. But now, if we put one one, two, and three here, we're forced to put the fourth one in one of the existing 2p orbitals that are already occupied by one electron. So by convention, we put it on the leftmost p orbital. So that one would be paired and the other two are not. If we go to fluorine, we have now nine electrons total. We place all of them together. They would look like this. And then lastly, we have neon, this last element in the second row of the periodic table. We place them like this. We see that that completes the entire set of orbitals. All the orbitals are completely filled with electrons for neon. I want to point something out as well, which is the discussion about valence electrons electrons that we talked about earlier. Remember that valence electrons are important because they're the electrons that are involved in chemical reactions. Valence electrons are electrons that are located in the valence shell, which is the shell that is the furthest away from the nucleus, or another way to say it is the outermost shell. So let's go back down here to learn what our valence shell and what our valence electrons is. If I go to lithium here, you notice that there's two different shells. Shell, remember, is the energy level which is given by the first number in the configuration. So there's shell number one and there's shell number two. So in the case of lithium, our valence shell then is the one that's furthest away, which is shell number two. So in this case, our valence shell is shell number two and we have one electron in it. In this case, there's one valence electron for lithium. If we take the example of carbon, for example, we look at the configuration. It says 1s2, 2s2, and 2p2. Again, we look at the shell number here. The shell number is 1 and 2, 2 being the larger number, so that will also be the valence shell for carbon. And we count how many electrons are in shell number 2. There's the 2s electrons and then there's the 2p electrons. So all four of them are the valence electrons for carbon. So in other words, carbon has four valence electrons. This is a common confusion for students because a lot of times they only look at the last orbit but remember that the valence electrons is the electrons that exist in the valence shell and the valence shell is the largest shell in that specific atom or the outermost shell. So going to fluorine, for example, you can see that our second shell is still our valence shell. And in this case, we have a total of seven valence electrons for fluorine.